Thank you, and uh, good evening. Uh, yeah, my name is Brian, and I'm here to talk about change. Uh, not the kind of change you find in your couch, because you know, unless you're Bill Gates, that's not going to be enough to change affordability, but the kind of change that we might be looking at as we look forward to the future, change in the physical environment, the operations, and how we experience Tacoma, how that relates to some of the challenges that we see, some of the realities that you've already heard some about and you will continue to hear about, I think, as we look forward into different speakers, as well as um, some of the opportunities that we maybe see uh, for, for change and how that can really address affordability and those challenges in this community. So change is sort of uh, all around us, right? We're getting older, uh, politics, economics, all sorts of things are changing. Technology is constantly changing. Um, the reality we all know and deal with is that change is inevitable. Change is happening. Um, even though we may try to shy away from that, you know, plastic surgery or whatever it is. Um, I had a great discussion recently with uh, some middle school students and realized how funny it is and how uh, quick change is, is like, you know, when was these things in invented? Like, I think the first iPhone was 2007 or something like that. And like, so this is a game changer for a lot of us older folks, but for them, it's just part of the game, right? So change is inevitable. The other part of that equation is that change is difficult. Um, this concept, homeostasis, right? Essentially, the idea that natural systems are usually looking for balance or sustainability, some level of stability and continuation. That's certainly true in biological environmental systems all over the place, but guess what? It's true in humans as well. So humans are usually looking for desiring homeostasis or balance, which is essentially no change, right? So the difficulty of dealing with change is inevitable, and at the same time, change is difficult. So that's kind of my premise here. So what are the, some of the challenges that we struggle with? Jacques alluded to a little bit of it. Um, you'll hear some more, I'm sure, as we continue on. I like, I like these maps because this kind of gives an interesting regional picture of what change has looked like in this area over, this was a 60-year period, right, from 1940 to 2000. There's, the red is essentially developed areas. So clearly there's uh, a lot more, and it's spread out all over the place, right? So the recognition of that change here now about three decades ago led the state, the community, to really say, wait a minute, in the process of growing in this way, are we really destroying part of what is important about the Northwest? The farms, the forests, the mountains, and things like that. If we continue down that path, are we really going to lose something that ultimately is special for us? So part of that, and a lot of people talk about the Growth Management Act, so that's a big uh, piece of legislation that came into, into play 30 years ago has a big effect on us as a community in large part because what it says is Tacoma is the right kind of place to grow. So Jacques mentioned regionally uh, we're about 4 million people and we got a couple million more coming. So 50% growth over the next 30 years maybe. That's a lot of folks. What does that look like in Tacoma? Uh, you know, we're, we're planning for somewhere around another 100,000 by 2040. Um, that's significantly more growth than we have seen traditionally in this community, but it's ultimately us playing that role to help protect the region, help protect those spaces that are really important. It's also the right place to grow because it's an existing developed place, because it has infrastructure, because it has the ability to connect people to community services, to opportunity, those kinds of things that those far flung, as you drive a half an hour, an hour, or whatever it is for your commute, um, become bigger and bigger difficulties for all of us. So um, one, of the next, one of the next pieces I want to talk a little bit about is how that relates to affordability. So I'm glad I picked a different graphic out of the Affordable Housing Action Strategy than Jacques did. So this is the one I like. Uh, it, it talks a little bit about, hey, over this almost 20-year period, we saw 20% increase in incomes. Yay. Oh, wait. Uh, rental went up by double that, and home ownership costs went up by five times that same amount. So folks have probably seen lots of graphs that kind of show this looking out historically, and clearly there's a pretty significant diverging reality between how much people are making and how much their housing costs. So I, I say this in two ways. One, obviously, we need to do what we can to curb or address the growing increase in the cost of housing. But income is a big part of this, right? The amount of housing you can afford is a combination of two factors, how much your house costs, your housing costs, and how much money you have in your pocket. 
So I think some folks will talk about that a little bit too, but, too, but having good quality jobs in this community is another really important part of this equation. Uh, this one, now, when we go out and talk, you know, I said 100,000 people, right? It's something like uh, six a day or maybe nine a day, depending on which numbers of growth you want to look at that are coming towards the city of Tacoma. Um, a lot of folks, when I'm out talking in the community, are like, well, let's build more houses. Of course, that makes sense, right? Let's just build more houses. Uh, we've been doing that for a long time. And how many houses do we have to build and where would we stick them all? So this is another one of our big challenges is that the truth is Tacoma is a largely built city. You know, we've been growing out for 100 years plus, honestly, and not too much up. Um, so if you take the existing housing and how much you would need, if you're doing it all in single family houses, I make reference here to Point Defiance because it's a green space that everybody knows. Well, we might need, we could fill, fill up Point Defiance with houses, but we need like two or three more of those or maybe six or seven, depending on what sort of growth factors that we're looking at. So it's a real challenge in a built city to accommodate growth of the scale that we are talking about. So what are we doing? Uh, the affordable housing st action strategy is in, in large part a reaction to the crisis like Jacques mentioned. Uh, we have for a couple of decades now been working on trying to encourage growth in the right ways, in the right places. Um, we've been, there's been a huge focus in this community on mixed use centers, trying to focus them in these concentrated areas like Proctor and 6th Avenue and McKinley and Lincoln. And we certainly see the ramifications or the outputs of some of those efforts even particularly just recently in the last five years or so, with a lot of consternation in the community, certainly, about whether that is good or what we are losing or gaining in the process of that change. We're also looking at, and there's certainly been a lot of discussion recently about our infill pilot program, which launched here a couple of years ago as a mechanism to try to test out new development types in residential areas. And the other one up there, accessory dwelling units, obviously got a lot of uh, um, play earlier this year when the City Council, after actually like the third try in 20 years, did adopt an allowance for accessory dwelling units in more parts of town. So I said Tacoma is largely built. Um, what is the one of the challenges? You know, we only have so many tools, to be honest with you. Government only builds so much housing. We can't really control the cost of it that well. Uh, we really don't control how much people make very much. So we have certain incentives and levers and certainly that we can put in place. One of those obvious ones is zoning, which helps to dictate what can happen where and what can't happen where. So I use this to show some of the real challenges that we struggle with. Have we as, have we as a community have focused growth in these compact areas, what we are doing is leaving out the vast majority of the community in that conversation. So the one on the left is the single family zoning in the city of Tacoma. It's about 60% of the city is single family zoning, dedicated almost exclusively for, ex exclusively for single family uses. So in the conversation about growth, yeah, we are certainly focusing on putting growth into centers in compact areas in downtown and places like that, but is it reasonable or realistic that we can over the next 10, 20, 30 years accommodate the kind of growth that we are talking about while keeping the single family off the table, which honestly has been sort of the path for the last about 70 years. So a lot of what you hear about is missing middle. This is certainly something that the city is looking at. The council has adopted a lot stronger policies on this to try to focus on how we might be able to incorporate different types of housing into existing developed neighborhoods. And so it gets captured in this idea of missing middle. You have accessory dwelling units, you have duplexes and triplexes and fourplexes and tenplexes and townhouses and things like that. That's sort of the scale of what Missing Middle is really talking about. And the, the idea of it is that it's a lower mechanism to get into the market. It's generally cheaper development. And it has potentially, if done right, the ability to actually fit into these developed residential areas, which is, which is certainly one of our biggest struggles. So with all that, where does that leave us? Right. Um, Basically, I guess the, the premise, as I said, is that change is both inevitable and hard. So what I see, I guess, over the next few years is a pretty interesting conversation in this community about what growth looks like, what we are willing to let change, what we are not willing to let change. I, you know, I throw up some others. What is a neighborhood, right? Is a neighborhood just a single family neighborhood or what is a neighborhood that involves other types of uses in it? Is downtown a neighborhood? You know, I think those are really interesting questions out in the community that we don't tend to get a lot of 
um, um, orientation towards uh, what is character. We certainly want to protect character, but what do we really mean by character? What are the important parts to preserve, and what are the parts that we're willing to to let slide a little bit in the in the opportunity of of accommodating more people in this community. So um, really it gets down to how do we, over these next few years, engage in a constructive conversation about what's something that is very difficult, like I say. So um, I'm interested in that. I'm interested to hear from all the other folks and, and love to talk to folks at the end of this. So.